are we wearing these things? <laughs> because yes. they're smoking jackets. Why would you not want to wear a smoking jacket? I want to quote you on that. But why are we wearing these? They're smoking jackets. That's naturally why what you do wear. Why would you not want to wear a smoking okay, why, jacket? You've got like one cuff that's... So naturally, showing. we wear smoking jackets. So we just look like a couple of jolly English smokers. English gentlemen. It was the day after the court case, and all through the town, not a creature was stirring. They had all settled down. Chief Ellen J was nestled, all snug in his bed, while visions of outlaws and gunfights danced in his head. Master Smoothlips was resting, his brain was all shot, the deviousness of his plan. Who would have thought? Mr. News was gathered round the table of source. His favorite meal was Mexican, of course. Media Jr. is glad, but why, we're not sure. His client in handcuffs, he seemed to ignore. St. Church is beaten, all battered and worn. His client has lost, and now all is forlorn. Poor Anne is all crumbled, all scared and confused. She backed down and hid, her feelings all bruised. When what to our wondering eyes should appear? But puppet strings attached to our dug hoop so dear. His head is all hung, all cast down with care. Stand up for what he believed, he just wouldn't dare. He failed to stand up for what he holds dear. He hid his true convictions out of nothing but fear. But all is not lost, his faith is not over. The Lord will make all new and regain his composure. The light of his coming, the glory of his all, he strengthens and guides all those who will call. Doug Hoop is not abandoned, not lost in his shame. He'll be sustained and forgiven in the Lord's good name. Doug failed his first test, but he'll rise once again. The Lord will still use him, he'll harvest like grain. All those who will seek him and stand for his sake, the times will be trying, but a leader he'll make. Now rest easy, literal, the sustainer above. No dark hoods or schemes can drown out his love. D minor. I remember it mm, well. Splendid D minor. Mm, splendid, yes. splendid. Long story, but later. Welcome to the explanation video for episode five, uh, The Literal Christmas Identity. This month in Literal, we experienced something a little bit new. Master Smoothlips' client, Christmas, has sued the entire town of Literal for stealing his identity. At the opening of the show, we discover that Anne and Doug Hoop are on a special assignment at the literal courthouse. We also find that they are doubling as the jury for this court case. Now, when you first watch this, it may just simply appear to be SC Treehouse's way of bashing Christmas. However, let's take a closer look at what's actually taking place here. The first thing is Master Smoothlips' statement that Christmas's identity has been stolen. This requires Doug and Ann to assess this claim and look at the evidence and then decide whether or not they should stand for their beliefs. Unfortunately, as Mr. Mia Jr. stated in the episode, the church has imposed its beliefs on Christmas because Christmas was originally a pagan holiday. Not a Judeo-Christian one. This holiday, known as Saturnalia, was a celebration of the winter solstice and the sun god. Saturnalia was a week-long celebration from December 17th to December 25th. Saturnalia was um, a celebration of lawlessness. Uh, all the Roman courts were shut down, uh, and the law stated that no one could be held responsible for uh, damage, to, damage to property or, or personal injury. It covered all the pagan favorites, uh, such as human sacrifice, uh, public nakedness, sexual license, oh, and intoxication. So, why was this holiday chose to celebrate the birth of our Savior? That's a great question! Why is that, Christopher? Honestly, I really don't know, and I don't understand the logic behind it either. But nevertheless, in the 4th century, the Christian leaders decided to celebrate the birth of Jesus on this holiday to encourage the pagans to become Christians. They even promised that a pagan could celebrate this holiday even after they converted to Christianity. 
the Puritans uh, in Massachusetts actually even went so far as to ban Christmas from the years 1659 to 1681. Don't believe me? Do some research on the origins of Christmas. You'll find some pretty disturbing information. By now, uh, some of you might be saying, well, that's not what Christmas is. I mean, it was that, but that was a long time ago. It's not like that anymore. Y'all are being too radical. Are we? Well, maybe. But we here at SC Treehouse Productions started out at the beginning of Literal to state what we believe and why. Episode 5 is a pivotal turning point for our characters, and we see that in the discussion between Anne and Doug as they're trying to decide a verdict for the court case. Doug, what do we do? Uh, I don't know. Justice must be made, but if it is, then Christmas becomes a worldly lowdown sinner. But if we rule the other two innocent, then we'll be guilty of the same crime we're so often to accuse others of. We'll be changing Christmas's identity. I, I don't know, Anne. What do you think? Anne. I can't, do, I can't do this, Doug. I just can't deal with conflict like this. I don't want anyone to go to jail. I can't do this. So, you're leaving the ruling up to me then? I'm sorry, Doug. In mainstream Christianity, Christmas has no longer become simply just the celebration of the Messiah's birth. Even though, more than likely, he wasn't born in December. But sadly, it's also become blended with many worldly traditions as well. Um, with a little bit of research, one can actually see how much these worldly traditions have influenced what many consider to be a Christian holiday. So why do we even open this huge can of worms? Or try to discuss this topic? Are we just trying to ruin Christmas for everyone? Are we just a bunch of Scrooges? Yeah! No. Oh. Our intent in this goes back to the reason for literal in the beginning. What do you believe? Do you know what you believe? Do you know why you believe it? Are the origins of your belief biblically based? Are they honoring to our Savior and Lord? The world is turning faster and closer to the end as we know it. One day the eastern sky will split and Yeshua the Messiah will come forth and take his rightful place as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The question is, will we be able to come before him with a clear conscience, knowing that we did everything within our power not to be conformed to this world, but to be renewed and transformed in our minds, able to discern what his good and perfect will was. Yeshua said in John 15, 19, that we are not of this world because he has chosen us out of this world. We're also reminded in 1 John 2, 15, that we are not to love the world or the things of this world. So, should you celebrate Christmas at all? Well, we're not here to judge. That's everybody's own choice. But literal what we believe was made as a challenge. So here's the challenge. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind in the Father. Know what you believe and why you believe it. Don't get the world confused with the church. And be so in love with the Father that there's no room for love of anything else. And the cameraman Cameron went home with a smile, imitating Chief Law and Justice for many a mile. <laughs> that was <laughs> I was deciding to do something. I think that would be hilarious. Saturnalia. <laughs> okay. That was pretty good. We, we got